What's up? Well, at the time of recording this, it's a few days after Christmas, and I got a new arcade cabinet, a mini arcade cabinet. Now, what happened was, you know, if you followed my channel, you know that I've made arcade cabinets, I've modded arcade cabinets, I've made mini arcade cabinets. Well, some friends, their daughter won this in a raffle a couple of years ago at school. And she went off to college and she wasn't using it anymore and she asked if I wanted it. And I said, yeah, sure, why not? Now, I remember when they got it that they said that there were audio issues and I, I haven't looked at this thing very much. So this is going to be a very laid back video. I'm just checking it out. Um, my son turned on the other day, played a couple of games, but yeah, there was no sound. Um, also, this is a very interesting cabinet. It, it's, it's a Miss Pac-Man cabinet, but I'm not sure if it's a legit one or if someone just made this. And the reason I say that is it, it says by Midway here, but that's just the standard Miss Pac-Man logo here. But there's no other stickers on it with model numbers. Usually they have electrical warnings on them. There, there's no other sticker that says anything about a brand or model or anything like that. I've also looked online and I cannot find a cabinet that looks like this. I found one that looks like it that like, says Miss Pac-Man on this side and then the side says Galica, so it's a two game thing. I thought this was going to be just a Miss Pac-Man game, but when we turn it on, it has 30 or 40 different games on it. And it's a standard little look, like if you go to uh, sometimes restaurants or, or arcades will have like a tabletop or something like that and you can flip through multiple games, it, it's that setup. So it's not like an emulation station or retro arch or anything like that. Uh, but yeah, again, there's no labels on it. Now on the back, there's a, there's a hole, like it's a big handle, so you pull off the back, which I haven't yet. But looking in that, I can see written on the wood inside someone's name and a date. So it seems like someone made this and dated it. Uh, because again, I cannot find this exact cabinet online. I've seen, again, the half one. I've seen ones kind of look like this, but it's, it's like half. This, this is a pretty thick cabinet. And I've seen ones that are like half this this thickness. Now, I wasn't planning on doing any modding on, modding on this system because I already have my full arcade. I thought this would be a great thing when I have people over. Because sometimes I have arcade days where people come over and play different arcade games. This could be a second unit someone can sit out and play some old school games. But the audio doesn't work, so I want to look into that. Turning it on. Half of the backlight seems to be out because you can see the picture fine, but it gets definitely darker up in the top left corner here. So that may be an issue. I don't know if there's anything I can do about that. But again, looking in that hole in the back, I haven't opened it up yet. There's the the person's name and date written on the inside on the wood, just in like a marker or something. But I can kind of see the board and the wire going up to the screen. And when I turn it on, uh, it doesn't do a group process like it's Linux or anything like that. It just says loading system and it goes through a bunch of different things. But for a moment when you turn it on, the screen has the little overlay, the on-screen display that says uh, that it's checking DVI and VGA inputs. So that makes it sound like it has DVI and VGA inputs, but that doesn't necessarily always mean that there's actually a VGA or a DVI plug. But looking in that hole, it looks like there's a VGA cable coming from the computer down here at the bottom into a VGA cable at the top, which is great because if it's just VGA, that means I don't have to buy any driver board if I wanted to hook another computer up to this. So I'm going to open it up now, see how it's hooked up to the screen, see how the controller's hooked up to it, because I have a whole box, I actually have two boxes of extra arcade parts here, which are extra buttons and stuff. Um, I don't think I have an extra driver board uh, for the controllers, but I could always just do, there's very minimal buttons on here, I could do an ESP and make a hid device. Uh, again, I really didn't want to do much modding on this, but I might have to, to, I don't know, I don't say I have to, but there's no sound. Let's just, let's just move up. Let's open it up and have a look. Okay, again, this is my first time opening it up, uh, and again, there's no labels inside here that say anything about a company or model name, which again, I think someone made this, and it's not just store-bought. Looking here again, it says, looks like AD maybe, uh, as initials, 91721. And looking at the board here, it says 60 and 1, which makes sense, because there were 10 screens and there were 6 games on each screen, so there's 60 games on here. And yes, it definitely just has a VGA output here, uh, which is awesome. And over here on the other side, we have a power supply, uh, which going from that, there's a wire that goes up and it powers the screen up here, which looks like it's just a regular three-prong like PC cable, which is what also powers the whole device. Uh, so that's convenient. Uh, and it even has, yeah, a little little board here, just like when I modded my other cabinet. Now, here's the speaker, and you know what? 
There's two wires there, black one's connected, and there's another one just hanging here. That's why there's no sound. This just got unplugged at some point. So I bet if I plug that in, I'll get audio. I'm gonna plug this wire back in. It just looks like it clamps back on to the speaker there. Oh yeah, it's definitely loose. I might need to pinch that down with some pliers. Uh, so hopefully that fixed the audio issue. So the only other issue was this side, uh, the, the back light seems to be burnt out. I don't know if there's anything I can do about that without replacing the whole screen, which I'm not gonna do, because that's like the main part of this. I can replace the computer real easily, because again, it's just a VGA output. It actually looks like it has another audio output if I wanted to hook up separate speakers. The board also looks like it has, well, let's look at the board again. So again, the board has this big ribbon cable on here that goes, you know, the power comes in here, and the controls for the uh, arcade buttons all come in here. Uh, so this board is kind of set as how it is. It also has this white plug here, which looks like a standard, I can't see the other end of it, but it looks like, like a, I don't even know what you call them, the, the power plugs when you have for hard drives in computers. So it could be powered separately. It's also really nice that the, the controllers are just standard controllers, two wires coming off each one, some daisy chained uh, for the ground, uh, but they're all accessible right there as well as the joystick. So this is, this is good. Again, I don't plan on really modding this, but if I wanted to, this would be very easy to mod. Now let's come some dip switches on there. I wonder what that does. Because there are arcades out there where there might be one or two games and if you change the dip switch, it changes the games it plays. So I might change that dip switch because right now, uh, it's there's, there's four dip switches and number four is down uh, and the other three are up. So I can change those and see what that changes on the game. Hopefully this, again, I need to clamp this down, but I think I just fixed the audio issue. And uh, I'm gonna turn it on and see if I can see the backlight on here. And again, I don't know if there's gonna be anything I can do about that. I don't think I can replace just the backlight. And uh, the big thing about a cabinet like this is the actual cabinet and the screen. Everything else is easily replaceable. So if something was to happen to the main board down here, the fact that this already has VGA and DVI, oh, and it even has an HDMI input. So any laptop I have is gonna be one of those three things. Is that maybe display port? I can't really tell because it's kind of a weird angle. But I could definitely hook up a laptop to this. I could easily wire those buttons into a controller board that goes to a laptop. So I could, if, it's good to know that if the board on here, something was going wrong with that, I can easily re replace it. I just pull out the power supply, pull out the, uh, the board, and just drop a laptop in here, or a mini computer, or whatever, and I can still use this, and I just have to hook up the controls. So what I'm gonna do now, is I'm gonna plug it in, I'm gonna turn it on, and see if I can see the backlight here lit up, and see if I can see where it's burnt out. Okay, I just got some pliers, I'm gonna pinch down this audio connector, try to clamp it on there a little bit better. Oh yeah, that's better. That was simple, or that was easy. Also super nice, again, this just has a standard three-prong connector here that you use for many desktop PCs. I'm gonna turn it on. I turned it around because some of you might wanna see the boot process. I don't know how clear it's gonna come out. Try to turn off all the lights in the room to prevent too much uh, reflections on the screen here. Oh, yeah, it's plugged in. There we go. So you can see system initializing, and it said about the VGA inputs there and HDMI, so system initialization 13. <laughs> 60, 60 fish. So it must be initializing each game, checking each game, each ROM or whatever it is that's checking, it's finalizing, and here we go. And again, this is, yeah, you can see it in the camera how much brighter it is over here compared to over here. It doesn't make the game uh, unusable, of uh, the arcade unusable, and so iCade is what this says up front, up top. And you know what I did just notice? There's audio now, so I did fix that problem with the speaker. There we go. Two players. And sound. I don't know how to exit the game besides dying and letting it time out. So, again, another thing that makes me believe that this is something somebody made and not store-bought is usually one of the buttons will say, or there'll be some sort of directions, press this button to enter game, press this button to exit game, or press two buttons, and there's none of that. Like I said, the only way I know how to exit a game is to die, and then at the title screen just wait a little bit, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds, and it'll exit out of the game if you don't start one. Uh, and looking at the back here, this light here is on the board. There's buttons on there. That's just like the driver board that I put into my other arcade system. Uh, that allows you to do things like rotate the screen, just like you would on a TV. It's basically those settings buttons like on a TV or a monitor. Uh, right here, this is uh, obviously the power supply for the backlight, and I can see the light shining in around the corners here, uh, but 
not over here. I'm assuming that I, I don't. I don't. I'm assuming there's not much I can do. I don't want to pry apart the screen. I don't want to make it worse. Um, theoretically, I guess I could replace whatever that is—an LED strip or a bulb that uh, is out. Uh, but again. I already have a full-size arcade, and this is going to just be kind of a complimentary thing that's on the side, um, and that's why I'm not putting too much effort into it. And it's still very playable, even with the one side of the screen being a little bit darker. And now I've got audio, which is awesome. Uh, but again, the, the big thing is that screen being burnt out, everything else I can replace. It's, uh, but the screen itself, it just wouldn't be worth it for replacing me, since I already have an arcade. Because um, the cabinet and the screen are the two big things. Buttons, joysticks, and the computer itself are super simple for me to replace. I've got all that stuff laying around. Again, I have two boxes <laughs> of arcade parts just from when I build arcades because you order the, the set of buttons and they send you so many buttons and you really only need, you know, at most six buttons per player and then a, a player one to player two button and maybe a coin button. And, but you'll get enough to have like nine buttons per player. So I just have boxes of extra arcade parts and yeah. So again, this is kind of a laid back video, uh, just giving you a view at this. Again, 99.9% uh, .9 sure that this is something somebody made. Doesn't mean, I, I, earlier I think I said it's not legit, like it's not company made, uh, but this board, I'm assuming that they're, they're licensed game, games on this 60 in one board. It doesn't seem like it's a pirated thing, although it could be, but I would assume you could probably buy this board if you're going to make an arcade. If you wanted to build your own arcade and do it legit, uh, that's probably what this board is for, and I don't think it's ROMs like like on my other arcade that I've modded so that it plays all different games. So uh, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the K. There's a link in the description. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I cover lots of different topics, uh, and keep on watching. Subscribe. Check out my channel. My uh, website and <laughs> now I'm just rambling. Well, thank you for watching. Happy New Year. I don't know when I'm going to post this video. Uh, New Year's Eve is tomorrow and uh, I, I don't think I'm going to get this video done by then. Uh, it actually will probably be a couple of weeks. But here we go. Have a great day. Well, one more thing. Uh, I did just press uh, the menu button on the little board inside for the screen and apparently this display is a uh, HP display which was interesting. So you can see all the settings here. Just thought some people might be interested in that. So if you can read this, this is the uh, information about the screen. The backlight has hours, it says 29,546. So clearly this thing had been somewhere before my friends got it, unless they just left it on all the time, which I don't think they did. It just ran and ran and ran, because that's a lot of hours. No wonder the backlight's burnt out. Okay, getting ready to edit the video I just filmed, which you just watched, and uh, I realized I had some unanswered questions in the video. First of all, uh, these IK uh, boards, I uh, looked them up on Amazon here, and it looks like you can get them for 50 or $60, whether you want uh, to have the second player controller or not. That's the board, the power supply, the cables, and the buttons and joystick. Obviously, you still need a screen, but these have, again, VGA output. And uh, yeah, so if you wanted to build one of these yourself, you can get all this stuff for 50 or $60. So yes, you can get them on Amazon, but are they legit? Uh, so again, I, I was unsure whether the board uh, was licensed games or not. And I've looked it up, I, I, I tried Googling it. I Googled, are IRK, uh, I, uh, are IK games pirated? Okay, according to this, uh, this fandom website, it does have it listed here. Someone wrote uh, that it has 55 unique pirated games and five duplicates. So according to this website, it's, it's pirated. Uh, this is also almost 20 years old, it looks like. Uh, so I guess these things have been around for a while. And if they are being pirated, no one's stopped them so far. Uh, I also, uh, you know, I looked at some forums. The only thing I can say is I've seen forums where people are discussing, are these, are these not? I, I don't know. I'm. You can get legit games that are licensed, um, but these, all the games on this 50 or 60 and 1, they are from different developers. So uh, the fact that they're all licensed together, I don't know. I know I can go to my mall and there's an arcade store that sells arcade cabinets with thousands of games, and I'm pretty sure they're pirated because they'll list them as like 500 games. I'll go through it and it will have the same game listed there multiple times, and I don't think a legit thing would do that. But apparently, no one's going and stopping even, you know, these things coming off Amazon or the mall. So. Yeah, I, I, I don't know at this point. doesn't seem like they're licensed, but they, this board has been around for a while. Just, I really don't care, but I'm just listing that as 
something you may be interested in. I forgot to go back to the dip switch thing. So on my board, I had dip switch one, two, and three on and four was off. So here is, I just Googled it, found a user's manual. Uh, the one dip switches flip the screen. So mine is flipped. I guess if I undid that, it'd be upside down. Uh, it just depends on which way you put the screen in. Mine's set to VGA mode and high score saved is enabled. So it should save the high scores even when you turn off the power. Now, uh, number four, system mode, normal and test mode. What does that mean? Uh, I didn't read it in here, but I watched a YouTube video with a guy that demonstrated that. If you flip four on and then restart the device, it actually brings you into a settings machine where you can change the settings for each game individually. So you can set like free play, which on my system, you kind of, have, it is free play because there's no, you don't have to put coins in, but you have to hit a button for coins. Uh, you can go in there and just set free play so it's all on. There's a lot of other settings different for each game. So you can go through every single of the 60 games and change individual settings on the screen there. There's also, you can adjust the volume, overall volume for the system and a few other settings. So you flip this, you restart the device, you use your joystick and buttons to manually go through all those settings. Then you flip the dip switch off, restart, and those will be the settings for the games after that. Uh, obviously, there's uh, a lot more information here on that, but that's the basic concept of the dip switches. So, yeah. I do thank you again for watching FilmsbyChris.com. That's Chris with a K. As always, I hope that you have a great day and a happy new year whenever you're watching this. I hope your year is going well.